welcome to my channel if you're new or welcome back to my channel this is the third and final part to my mini bridal series here on youtube the other two i'll have linked in the cards or at the end screen if you want to go check them out everything i use will be linked down in the description below if you want to go check that out including my pre phase my pre made up makeup face before i actually started i really really hope you guys like what i came up with it is similar to what i actually look like on my wedding day obviously more amped up more glam i didn't have lashes on my wedding day i didn't do too much highlight this eye look was way more toned down i feel like while it is the same colors it just wasn't as dramatic on my wedding day i hope you enjoy i hope it gives you some inspiration and with that being said let's get on into the video so i plan on going back and forth between one of the palettes i actually used on my wedding day and just whatever other palette i can find that can get the look as close to my actual wedding day as possible. This is obviously long overdue. I'm super excited. So we're going to do a cut crease today. It'll look similar, but not exactly the same. It's just how I would have done it today if I was getting married. And I'm also going to insert the clip of me trying my wedding dress on. I'm not going to retry it on because I'd have to get it out again. I do wish it was a little bit better quality and place I had filmed, if that makes sense. But nonetheless, it is what it is. We'll see the end result of if my wedding dress still fits towards the end of the video. So we're going to go in first with the 35V palette by Morphe. It's a beautiful thing right here. Oh, gorgeous palette. Most of, pretty much all Morphe's palettes I love. I love the quality. I love formula. I love Morphe. I've been shopping with them forever. I haven't bought anything recently from them. I haven't really bought anything recently from anybody I'm going in with these two shades right here vixen and scandal i believe i think anyway so yeah i haven't bought really anything from anybody i did have to cancel a ColourPop order around the time covid started i don't know if they still do it now i haven't been on their website in so long but it was whenever they were doing the create your own palette type of thing and i created this gorgeous palette um all the shades that you know if i were to create a palette or since i was able to make a palette it, that's exactly what it would have looked like but i ended up canceling it because it was taking too long to come in and i think in total it was over like 50 bucks which is quite a bit um but i also added like some some lashes or something so maybe it wasn't too much but i don't know i just ended up canceling that order i wish i hadn't now but it is what it is blood pops formulas are amazing the shimmers are to die for they apply so nicely. They're so smooth. I just feel like I'm cheating on Morphe in a way. I've been shopping with Morphe since like 2014, 2015. So they were the first, I think they were the first higher end, which they're pretty reasonable, reasonably priced, which is why I love them. The only thing you pay for really is shipping, but 95% of the time there's always coupon codes online you can find. But yeah, I don't know. My two favorite brands, though, for sure, are ColourPop and Morphe. Again, they both have good quality. I guess if I really, if it really came down to it, ColourPop does have a little bit better formula. It does blend a little bit easier, easier, easier. That's just my opinion. I'm sure somebody will beg to differ. I'm not big on Too Faced or Urban Decay. I do have an Urban Decay palette, but I'm just. I don't love it and they're pricey and i just feel like for how much you pay which okay I, you know what i'll give them the benefit of the doubt because i haven't bought any other palettes in a long time but the palette i do have their formula might have changed i think it's the urban decay naked 2 palette i don't know the formula just it's very dry it's very hard to blend their shimmers in there are actually really pretty but that's all i really like about it too Faced, I have actually one of their holiday collections behind me. I no longer have the palettes anymore, but I still have the little house thing that came in. It's really cute. But I was not big on their formula or, I don't know, or their palettes either. I'm just really stuck on ColourPop and Morphe. Uh, sponsor me, please. PR, package me, please. The next shade I'm gonna go in with is probably In The Zone. And I'll throw a little bit of wild thing in there. So I'm going to go in with these two. I did have more of a maroon look going on that day. My wedding colors 
were gray and a lavender purple, but yeah. I wanted like a smokyish eye. I didn't really want to go along the just like having purple eye. I feel like it wouldn't have looked that good. And I'm glad I did go with the look I had that, you know, I ended up wearing that day. I felt like it was very pretty. I did get compliments. And I just feel like because it was like so warm toned, it went well with my eyes. Plus I was also like new to makeup. I was getting more comfortable with more dramatic looks, I guess. I don't know, I just felt like for that time, I, I, I did pretty well. I'm not mad at myself. But if I were to do it today, if I were getting married today, this is probably how I'd do it. I'm wearing the same hairstyle as all my other makeup videos because this is kind of the only nice looking hairstyle I know how to do. I'm not good with updos. I'm not good with curling. I'm not really good with anything. So, anyway, I guess I could talk about my wedding day a little bit and leading up to it. I had more fun on my wedding day than I did planning my wedding. I didn't have as much help as I would have liked, especially for some things. Whenever I went to pick out my wedding dress, uh, it wasn't, like I think my wedding dress was super beautiful. I think it did suit me really well. It, it was a pretty dress. But I will say, I feel like I bought it more out of guilt and wanting to please somebody else than I did for me. If that makes sense, like it wouldn't have been my first choice of that. If it had just been me there wedding dress shopping or if I didn't have one of the people there that I did, I probably would have came in with a different dress that was more me. Which, when I say that, I mean like sparkly, um, over the top, dramatic, fancy, Cinderella, like, I don't know. It was, it was the style I wanted. I did want a Cinderella dress, which it, it was. But I don't know, I just, I just feel like it wasn't 100% me and I am. That's one of the few things I regret as far as my wedding. And I'm just blending with this clean brush. While I was dress shopping, this person did make some comments. One of them, which they've done kind of my whole life, but one of them again was being, you only, you don't like this dress because I picked it out. They've done that to me my whole life with things and I don't know. And they were also the same person that told me whenever I first got engaged that there are gonna be people who try to tell you how your wedding should be and try to basically guilt you into doing things that they would do. Tell them you'll consider their thoughts, thank you, and do what makes you happy in the end. They literally told me that. And I think it's amazing advice, but I don't know if they were talking about themselves or... My husband's home. My bridal party was good. Somebody in my bridal party would always choose everyone else over me, which I'm not saying, you know, I was their top priority 100% of the time, but as somebody who has a specific title in a bridal party and agreed to it, you know, I feel like if I need help and I ask you and you tell me yes, then you should do it right or I also didn't get a bachelorette party which kind of sucked in a way because again I just feel like they were always choosing everyone else over me and they were home for a period of time because my wedding was in the sun was in early fall it was in the, it was at the end of September so people's summer breaks usually happen between end of April the late August in college, you know. I'm just blending again. So, I don't know, it just hurt in that sense that again, I was always being put off to the side for this person's friends. Anywho, it's resolved, it's whatever. It was three years ago. Um, can't dwell on it forever. Don't take on a title if you can't fully commit, is all I'm saying. No hard feelings towards these people. Whenever I think about it sometimes though, as far as 
what went down before the actual wedding day it just kind of makes me sad it just kind of makes me sad that i'm just so easily influenced and i just give in too easily I can't, i'm kind of an easy target for people to walk all over and that's kind of what happened but it's completely my fault i'm just i guess it's called a pushover i'm i'm very easy i'm very I don't know it doesn't take much to convince me and it doesn't take much for me to give into something just to avoid confrontation or what i feel like would be considered confrontation and that's a me problem so i think that's pretty blended what do you think we're gonna go in now with one of the i think this was the second palette i ever bought from morphe it's the 35 os they have one similar it just has actual matte shades it's not completely shimmery but they no longer have this exact palette again it's I'll link it down below the one they do have. I'll link everything down below. I forgot to mention that. For my wedding, I think I went between these three shades. I used to love this shade. It's still very pretty. The palette's still very pigmented. It's just very old. I don't want to get rid of it because they no longer carry this exact palette anymore. And I think they're, it's just beautiful. I used to love this one too. I would always wear those two all the time. Oh they're so pretty so we're gonna just go between those three shadows i'm gonna cut the crease i'm gonna use a tarte shape tape concealer i'm gonna try to get it on camera but i might end up not i don't know i'm just gonna take this poofier brush i'm going to Half the excess off and if it's not completely straight we'll go in with a more precise brush in a minute precise a more precise brush here in a minute and sharpen that edge after we get the shimmer on so I'm kind of happy with that I'm gonna do the other eye off camera and I'll be right back okay I'm back we did the cut crease again if the angle changed I'm so sorry I say so a lot I don't know if anybody noticed if they didn't I did know but we're gonna go in now with those three shades I just showed you earlier and we'll use it on this Luxie 246 precision precision crease brush I don't know if there's actually fallout tones I can't remember we're going to bake a little bit let's throw some it'll just be a little bit easier to wipe away now we're going back in with those three shades and packing it on i did throw on a little bit of this creamish colored eyeshadow again i'll link everything down below with names and whatnot just to set the eye a little bit so we don't have any creasing use our finger too i like finger results better to be honest but depending on the length of my nails which i actually just cut these down today they're from halloween we'll do the inner corner and the brow bone in a minute now taking this stuff is just so pretty oh that eye it's a beautiful bridal look already so we're gonna take from be small i never know the names of my brushes unless it has like the actual name on it and i never i'm never one to remember to name my brushes as i use them i just honestly pick up a brush and use it um, i hardly half the time ever know exactly what it's for going back in with in the zone and a little bit of wild thing Yeah. these two right here i think i misnamed them earlier now looking at it i think i called them vixen and turned on but they're actually in the zone and wild thing so i'm so sorry about that so we're going to take this precise brush right here and we're just going to gently go along where we cut the crease just to sharpen it up and define it a little bit more same thing over here So I took it all the way down, pretty much the inner corner. I don't know, I don't know how I feel about it yet. But I will be taking just another precise defined brush and just blending that in a little bit. Don't want it too harsh. 
I'm taking a little bit of Knockout, which is that first shimmery shade. Just taking on the very tip and going right under where I define the crease a little bit more. Just kind of brighten it up, make it a little bit more harsh as far as the shimmer. And we can just drag the rest down. Then I'll take just a blending brush. I believe I used this earlier for something. Probably a blend. And we'll just blend that some. Okay, now that that's done, I'm going to, we're gonna fix the outer part. I'm gonna take this, it's also a Luxie 231 small tapered blending brush. I'm going back in with In The Zone and Wild Thing again. Those maroonish tone shades. And we're going to tap the excess off and tap it right there. I don't know what that is. But we're gonna tap it blending what we blended earlier and going into the shimmery shade. I'm sorry, I suck at explaining. I really do. We're just going to blend it's all together, kind of blending it inward on top of the shimmer so it looks like a smooth transition. And then bringing the color actually out onto the outer part of the crease. And yeah, we're just trying to make it look like a really smooth transition. This one, to me, does. And yeah, now we're gonna go to the other eye. I'm going to pack that on again and blend okay i'm loving it you guys i think it's so pretty i love it way more than the actual day of my wedding <laughs> we are going to throw on a wing and i'll probably do that off camera just because i need to be up close i'm taking some of this shade right here this addicted purpley shade right there i'm also packing that on just on the very outer part. And we can blend that in in a minute. I just, I wanna get it where I want it first. And then, yeah, we'll just blend that together. I'm gonna throw on a wing real quick, then we'll do the lower bottom of my lash line. I'm so bad at this. Um, and then I'll be right back. I did have a little bit of fallout on the side of my nose. It's fine. We can dust the rest off. Actually, tap because I don't want to smear anything. Now, we're going to do the lower lash line. I'm going to be taking this B Small. It points at the top brush. It's very precise. And we are going to go in with Vixen and Turned On. Which are those two? Right there. Smoke it out. Smoke it out. Hmm. Then we're also going to go back in with In The Zone and Wild Thing. And just throw that on top. I remember the first time I found out that you can use shadows on your lower lash line. It's around the time I was getting into makeup. So early on in college, like 20, I don't know, 20, end of 2013, going into 2014. Um, whenever I was starting to get more into makeup, I was just like shook, man. Cause I used to like do eyeliner down there, but it would just be, you know, them twist up liners, Maybelline, L'Oreal, whatever. And you, I don't know, I would just do a streak on this eye, a streak on that eye, never blended in. It was just line, line, very defined line. And then, yeah, it's crazy, crazy, crazy. This looks so much better compared to what I used to do. I'm going to take this Luxie small tapered blending numbers 231. And we're just gonna blend that out. But that's done. We're gonna go in with some mascara. If you saw my Ipsy video unboxing, then you saw that I got this Tristique mascara and curling wand thingy into one.
opening this bad boy up. I'm glad the applicator is not huge for some reason. I was thinking because the tube's kind of fat. I was just thinking it was like a huge applicator and I don't like those. I'm not like a big mascara person. I mean, I, I put it on because I, I don't like the way my lashes look without it. I still have to have lashes on anyway, but I'm just, I don't know. Like I've never found just one mascara that's just like blown my mind. So I don't know if I told you guys, maybe in like one of my other wedding series videos, I can't really remember, but I was gonna say I was born. My wedding day is September 30th. Uh, we got married 2017 in 2017 on September 30th, but we officially started dating on September 28th of 2011. Ooh, it's crazy, time flies. These are super dramatic actually, but I love them. I love the way they look. I think they're beautiful. They're the same lashes I wore in my angel inspired makeup tutorial. Um, they're the same ones I just wore in my Ipsy video. I just think they're beautiful, but they're gorgeous. They're like seven bucks on Amazon. I love how dramatic they are. These are, I wish I would have worn lashes on my wedding day. I just was not confident in doing lashes. Ugh, it would have made a difference though, let me tell you. I'm gonna pop some glue on these lashes real quick and place them on and I'll be right back so we can do the lip. Okay, so we're gonna go in with a lip now. Mine was like this nudie pink color. I like a lip liner before I do my actual lipstick or whatever. So we're gonna do that. <laughs> but we are going in with the House Laboratories Rip Lip Liner. It's beautiful. I got it from I think I got it for Christmas last year. I don't know. Or maybe it was my birthday. I don't remember. But I love it. So now that that's done and looks decent, I guess, we're gonna go in with the Dose of Color Liquid Lipstick in Flirty. It kind of smells okay. This is the closest to the actual shade I used. I think I used some highlighter that day. I can't exactly remember. But I'm pretty sure I used some on my cheekbones, not on my nose, but we're going to throw some on the nose anyway. But I used to go in with this one as a highlight shade, which is actually very pretty. Maybe we could just do that now. Oh, I'll use my finger. It makes this beautiful. I think I did go in with this. But it's like very pretty. Oh, I love a good highlight. This side always highlights better. Take a little bit and go on the very tip of my nose and down the bridge. Not all the way though because we want to make it look like, you know, I have kind of a lifted nose. I don't know. We're going to go in with this lavish pencil brush. That's what that was earlier. Pencil brush. The one where I said it looks like a Head. Anyway, we're gonna take that shade right there, that same shade, beautiful shade, love the shade, and we're gonna pop that on the inner corner. And on the brow bone. I love brow bone highlight. Oh, it's so beautiful. Makes the look. I always have to have some type of shimmer. I'm not one for just matte lids or anything especially when it comes to the eyes i have to have shimmer of some sort i love this look oh my gosh you guys it's a beautiful what do you think i would much rather have done my look like this if i could have if i had known more about makeup if i had done if i was better at technique at that time because again i was just learning getting into makeup you know i was finally comfortable with well, getting more and more comfortable doing like smokier eyes and stuff like that. But I do love makeup. I love to play with it. I love just sharing it with you guys, sharing my looks and 
what I'm able to come up with, inspirations, my techniques, even if they're not correct. But yeah, I guess this is where I'll be inserting my, does my wedding dress still fit? And my hair and makeup's different. Again, it was filmed on a different day. Sorry for the background, sorry. I don't know, I just wanted to show you if it fits or not. This is my wedding dress. I'm gonna try to show you as best I can. This isn't my ideal setting. Um, we do have a puppy box over here. We have some puppies. I haven't gotten out of the bag in since I wore it on my wedding day. Um, so, opening it up. It is what it looks like. Got some snags, probably for my cat. Um, and here's the veil. It is from Lowe's Bridal. I don't know if you can see that. But... Here is this is my dress. Holy cow! It is poofy. It does have a little bit of a train in the back, but I don't know. It is beautiful though, and it does bring back bring back a lot of memories. It, it was part of my special day, so I'll always cherish it, even if it wasn't my first pick as far as wedding dresses, but it is very beautiful. So it's a lace-up. I don't know how I'm going to do that, um, because I'm the only one here, so I'm the only one putting it on, but we'll just see. So anyway, I'm going to go ahead and start. Oh, shit. A lot of lace-up. There's, like, no way I will be able to tie this all by myself. But, like, imagine it. Wow. So I fit, obviously. This is bringing back a lot of memories. So I've always liked the Cinderella style. This is pretty much like the style I wanted. Um, it does have a train. I don't know if you can tell. Yeah. Like I said, I can't tie that up myself. Um, I don't know if you can tell how it is supposed to be tied. Here is the beading. Down here. This is my veil. It's got pretty beading on the side. It kind of goes along with the beading on my dress. I did not walk down the aisle with it over my face. Um, oh yeah, so was. I think it was higher up, but you get it. So it all fits. I'm so happy. This is my dress. Oh, wow. It's crazy. It's so fun. I feel like a model. Thank you guys so much for watching this video. It means the world to me. If you liked it, please give it a big thumbs up. That helped me out so much. Hit the subscribe button if you haven't already. Follow me on my social media at kfrancis24 on Instagram and Twitter. And with that being said, I'm going to go and I'll see you in my next video. Bye. I wanna hang out with my friends and